You cannot attract anything you want in life until you see yourself having it. And you might be sat there thinking, that's easy, you know, I'll just start imagining myself traveling the world or living in a mansion. No, just no. What you don't realize is all of the thoughts you have on a daily basis actually determine whether or not you're actually capable of attracting your desires. For example, when you feel guilty for buying yourself an ice latte, or when you don't invest your money because it's too much of a risk, or when you feel jealous of others because they're doing better than you, or when you say you can't afford to buy fruit from the grocery store because everything's just too expensive nowadays. All of those are examples of you putting limits on yourself every single day. And when you do this, you invite more stress, deprivation, and struggle into your life. The only way to get something different and actually create an abundant life is by rewiring your brain to only have abundant thoughts so you can actually attract everything you want and this is how you do it as always here are the video chapters remember that i have a podcast so you can listen to all of my youtube videos on the go it's linked down below make sure you check out my instagram and tiktok and also a big thank you to skillshare for sponsoring this video one of my favorite platforms and they are going to have a big role in some of the habits and lifestyle shifts we're going to talk about towards the end of the video so stay tuned chapter number one understanding the difference between a scarcity mindset and an abundance mindset because every single day we float through life and we have these thoughts that come in and out of our subconscious that we don't even realize are sabotaging us and that is what we call a scarcity mindset a scarcity mindset is when you view life very strategically things have to be changed and saved and done very carefully so that you can avoid any mistakes imperfection or risks and you think this because at your core you believe there are not enough resources to go around resources meaning money or opportunities absolutely anything and as a result of this you are more impatient possessive and always anxious a scarcity mindset isn't something that is always our own doing a lot of the times it's caused by our upbringing for example financial trauma um, growing up in a family where you know if your parents were always talking about money like there was never enough or there was always a lot of struggle that mindset would have been passed down to you and that means even if you've grown up and you're actually doing very well for yourself financially you will either overspend or always be penny pinching because of those habits you picked up when watching your parents but a scarcity mindset can be caused by loads of things like your own insecurity insecurities, having people pleasing tendencies, feeling the need to diet, never feeling that you are enough or going to be approved or accepted just as you are. And if you can relate to any of those things and you feel like those things still affect you to this day, you have the power to change your thoughts. And that's what we're going to be talking about right now. The change you are going to make is a shift towards an abundance mindset. This essentially means that you see a limitless potential in life. You're the kind of person that always sees the glass half full. You see all of the goodness and beauty and potential in the world, in yourself and in others. And as a result of this positivity, you are always intentionally driving yourself to achieve all of your goals because you don't have any doubt holding you back. You believe that it's possible for you to achieve everything and the same for everyone else. It's when you're looking at the world in hopefulness, you believe that things are always gonna get better. There's always more for you to receive. When you hear certain affirmations on TikTok, for example like I am a lucky girl everything I want flows to me that is an example of an abundance mindset it's like when something good is going for you yes you're grateful for it but you're also like hi universe can I have more because you believe there's always more to come around whereas a person in a scarcity mindset if something good happens to them they hold on to it they're like okay but what if this all goes away from me or like these people have failed so what if that happens to me you know you will never catch an abundant person feeling jealous or fearful or comparing themselves to another and that is because they genuinely feel happy and celebrate the successes of others because they know the good things that happen to everyone else does not take away from their own blessings and for that reason, you will catch abundant people always trying to give back. They will openly and freely give advice and wanna help people even if they're in their same industry because they don't see competition. Whereas people with a scarcity mindset, they're too busy to give back. They're too busy in their own head, thinking that things aren't gonna go right for them, thinking that the world is out to get them, the world is unfair, there's not enough money, there's not enough this, things are gonna be taken away from them. If they give back, a lot of the times they're doing it for their own gain. They're doing it to try and gain approval or get further. So to finish off the understanding chapter, you know we gotta bring in our girls. 
Wait for it. Lola and Athena. You know what? I have not seen you guys in a while. How are you? Now we already know Lola here is big on the scarcity mindset. She is just thinking like that every single day. And we know our girl Athena, she's got the abundant thoughts down. Lola wants to set up a business. She actually wants to do a lot of things. And when she finally plucks up the courage to try out these things and these ventures and these side hustles, she goes at it and she works and works and works. And then she hits an obstacle. And she says, this is too hard. Then she assumes she's going to fail and then she gives up. You know why? Because even though, yes, she's working towards her dreams, she is too distracted by everyone else who has made it before her and the fact that her life doesn't look like that yet. Lola also accepts any and every opportunity that comes her way, even if it doesn't align with her, even if it doesn't match the payment threshold that she should be setting for herself because she feels like when something comes her way, she has to cling onto it because what if nothing else comes? And Lola is also incredibly impatient because she is always counting on that one good thing coming, that one hope that she'll win that competition or get that job instead of focusing on all of the abundance in her present moment and life that she could actually be taking advantage of or just being grateful for. Now, in comparison, our abundant girl, Athena, is also trying to set up her first business and my God, is it hard. She is encountering obstacle after obstacle after obstacle. She has idols she looks up to and she wants to be in the same space as them. And is it disheartening that it seems like it's so easy for everyone else and not her? Absolutely, but she shifts her focus. She knows those people probably had to put years of work and struggles and failure into where they are now and she's prepared to do the exact same. When she encounters obstacles, she's like, challenges help me grow. They help me grow as a person, they grow my knowledge and they grow my ability to succeed. This failure and this difficulty is just part of my journey to success. Athena is also an amazing boundary setter and she loves to say no to people, especially when opportunities come her way, which seem good, but she knows she's worth more than that. So if you're not gonna pay her the amount that she has set for herself, and if you were going to try and undercut her, she does not care how good the opportunity might seem. She knows she can always get better. And Athena is extremely patient and grateful for every single thing she receives in life. And she's not waiting to get older or prettier or richer or more successful. She knows it will all come, but she's also happy right now in her current moment. And that is the difference. Chapter two, mindset shift my favorite. Number one, start seeing everything in life as a lesson by assuming that everything is always working out in your best interest. Ever since I started doing this, my life changed. You will not catch me complaining for days on end or feeling pessimistic or ever thinking that life is unfair. Do I go through hard days? Do I struggle? Do I cry? Absolutely. And that's because I'm human, but I will never think that my life is bad or rough no matter what comes my way. If I get rejected from a job or an opportunity, I'm like, something bigger and better is coming my way. Am I allowed to be sad about it for a while? Absolutely. But you can't beat yourself up about it and think, oh my God, this now defines my knowledge and where I'm gonna end up in life and my intelligence and my worth as a human. Whenever I've gone through a breakup in the last few years, I'm like, we broke up because we simply were not meant to be. I am being protected. If I was meant to have that, I would have that. This means that I am meant to either be on my own for a while or once again, have a better relationship. And that has happened every single time. Mindset shift number two. You never lose money, you only gain value. When you spend a certain amount at the grocery store, you are not losing 50 pounds, 100 pounds, you are gaining that amount in nutrients and wellness and health for your mind, for yourself, for your body, for your soul. When you spend 200 pounds to go see Beyonce in concert, you did not lose 200 pounds, you gained memories and joy and a fun day out with your friends. As long as you do have some financial boundaries and you only ever spend on real value, you will never lose out. Money itself has no value. The things you trade for it, those are the things that have value. Mindset shift number three, another person's blessings are never your loss. Stop seeing other people as your competition. It's literally none of your business. When you see someone winning on social media and you automatically assume, wow, life is going so good for them, why are things always so easy for them? You don't know how many battles they had to fight in order to get there. Just because you don't see their adversities doesn't mean that they don't exist. And this is why I am such a big believer that you should never, 
ever want to trade lives with anybody. You don't know what their self-perception is like, no matter how beautiful they are. You don't know what their mental health situation is like. You don't know what their family is like. You don't know the insecurities they have to fight every single day. Please be grateful for you. There is no such thing than a life that is better than yours. You cannot look at somebody else and be like, why am I not like that? Why do I not have that? The universe doesn't want that for you. Everything that happens to you is specifically tailored for you, the person you are, the journey that you've been on, the journey that you're meant to go on. You need to be grateful for that and know, wow, this path is personalized to me and what I need as an individual. Everybody else's, even as good as it looks, respectfully, would never align with me and I would not enjoy it. Mindset shift number four, struggle is a part of your journey to success. I am still not anywhere close to where I want to be in life and some days it's hard and I don't want to get out of bed or I try something and it fails or I let people down and you know what that does not automatically translate to me thinking what if I fail? Never. Thankfully, I've had enough life experience at this point where I know every single time I used to cry and feel sorry for myself and complain, oh, why is this not working for me? It ended up working, okay? Yes, for some people, it takes a little bit longer than others, but trust me, you are going to look back at your struggle and you are gonna laugh, okay? In fact, your future self right now is looking down at you smiling, thinking you don't even know how good it's about to get. When you start thinking that, like, okay, things aren't perfect right now, but it's just gonna keep getting better and I'm just learning something and where I wanna be, like I can fully visualize myself in that, that is abundance. If you wanna know a bit about me, I have an entire video on my channel dedicated to my story of failing and how it got me to where I am today. So I recommend you watch that. The next mindset shift is for you to stop stating and start questioning. And here's an example of doing this. When you go into the store and you are looking at a Chanel bag, for example, because this is what I personally did. It's so easy to look at it and think, I can't afford that, to be fair, I shouldn't even be in this store. I, should, I, don't, I can't even afford to look at this. I get it. You need to be so delusional, even if you have one pound to your name, I don't care, you're gonna look at that bag if that's what you want. And you are simply gonna say, how can I afford this? That is it. And just this starts changing your mindset. Your thought process completely switches. You are not shutting yourself off to the opportunity of getting something anymore. When you look at your dream job, instead of saying, oh, I don't have that experience or expertise, how can I get that experience? How can I become more skilled? How can I get hired for that job? Question everything in that way of how you can achieve things that seem so out of reach. And that is a very easy way to go from lack to abundance. And the last mindset shift before we move on to the next chapter is to channel your most ideal, successful version of yourself and act like them. Because guess what? That perfect version of yourself you're imagining in your head, they don't get to where they are until you start acting like them right now. Any single time that you encounter a problem or you're nervous or you're like, oh, can I do this? Should I go there? Take yourself out of your present moment. Think about the most successful, the richest, the most perfect, ideal, secure, confident version of yourself. What would they do? I do this to myself all the time. Just this morning, I had to go all the way down to London for a very scary meeting and I didn't want to go. And I thought, my future boss lady self, she would easily wake up at 7 a.m. and hop on the train and walk into that meeting so confidently, like, let's talk business, okay? So why am I not doing that right now? The second I think that my energy changes and I am able to show up as my best self. Chapter number three, habits and lifestyle changes. This is about how you create an abundant life. Now that you know the difference between the two mindsets and you have all of the mindset shifts in place so that you can start having abundant thoughts on a daily basis. So the first way to live an abundant life is by normalizing working confidently. What I mean by this is I want you to take some time to dream as big as you want. Like I said before, create that vision board, really get clear about what your ideal future successful self is, what they do, what they look like, who they are. Once you have an idea of these goals, write them down and then move that into a timeline. And then I want you to start working at these goals. This is important because abundant thoughts come from having confidence in oneself. And confidence is more easily achieved when you base it off something, especially a sense of achievement. If you know exactly where you wanna go and then you start planning out how you're gonna get there by just trying to be 1% better every single day, learning more about your field, putting in the work to get there, you're going to have so much more confidence in yourself and therefore be more abundant in your life and this is where Skillshare comes in and is going to help you achieve this goal so that you can live an abundant lifestyle. 
Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes and members to help you take the next step in your creative journey or the next step in achieving your dream life. If you feel like you don't have that accomplishment to go off of, to actually feel abundant in your ability to achieve, then you can use Skillshare to start any course in any area of your life. I'm talking graphic design, illustration, animation, design, creative writing, music, marketing, film, productivity, the list goes on. For example, you can start their entrepreneurship classes in order to get going on your side hustle. Therefore, you can't just sit around feeling sorry for yourself, feeling like you don't have the expertise. Skillshare actually massively influenced where I am now in my creator journey. It was years ago that I was exploring their website and I stumbled across some video editing videos. So I started watching them to brush up on my skills, but also learn about graphic design. And I would watch SEO because I heard all these YouTubers talk about the importance of it, but little old me had no idea what it was. Was. But my most recent experience with Skillshare was on their class designing the kind of life that you want and they basically give you a few exercises to get more motivation and also more clarity on how to set out the plan to get to that dream successful self we spoke about before and all the steps you need to go and get there. One of my favorite things I learned about was setting up your values and 80 20 your life. I love that concept. And when you do this, you give yourself the right tools to actually be able to control your reality. And that right there is the epitome of an abundance lifestyle. So if you are ready to get out there and start building on your confidence and attracting all of that abundance, then you can do it right now because Skillshare is giving you guys one month free trial on that platform when you use the link in my description. Good luck. The second lifestyle shift is to change your inner circle. And this does not have to be literal. I'm not telling you to stop talking to your siblings and cut off people that love you and care for you and have been there for you. I'm telling you to realize that not everybody in your life is going to align with the abundance mindset because unfortunately, a lot of people love to complain and a lot of people are set in their ways and do not engage with self-development like we do here. And that is okay. That doesn't make them bad people. However, it is important to shield yourself from these people and protect yourself from those negative thoughts. Because as Robert Greene said in his book, 48 Laws of Power, negative people who love to complain are like infections. Their mindset seeps into yours. And the more and more time that you spend with them, the more you're going to adopt that same scarce mindset. So I don't need to literally cut people off, but instead I change my inner circle by exposing myself on a daily basis to podcasts created by millionaires, self-development books, reading articles on how to get to where I wanna be, watching YouTube videos by creators who speak about finances and self-development. This leads me on to number three, which is to let go of what is no longer serving you. Hoarding is one of the best examples of this. People with a scarcity mindset love to do this because they never feel like there is enough and they have to hold on to things even though they haven't even touched it or looked at it or used it in years. This isn't just about belongings. It could be relationships, people, experiences, jobs that just don't align with them because they never feel like something better is going to come along. You need to realize that things don't need to be super bad for you to leave. Like you can break up with your boyfriend and distance yourself from a friend if it's not matching your higher self. Some habits to help you do this include stop hoarding those clothes because you think you might wear them one day and give them away knowing you will receive more money throughout your life to buy yourself new clothes. Break up with your boyfriend and then create a list of all of the standards you want in your dream partner and be confident knowing that you will receive that. And when things go wrong, always forgive and forget because grudges are for the unlucky and the unhappy. Lifestyle change number four is start helping others, okay? This really helps you live up your abundance and make it into a habit. Other people's wins are not at my expense. And when I give away advice and resources freely, that is me living out my abundant mindset. And when you do this, it signals to the universe, hey, I am so abundant and I'm so grateful for everything that you're giving me that I can give it out to all these people and still be overflowing with all of this good luck and happiness. Those people that keep things a secret or lie about how much they studied for a test or try to sabotage you or withhold information from you in order to win or do better are so insecure and have such a big lack mindset around life because they feel like they have to cheat and hide in order to just have a chance at succeeding. And all that means is they don't really believe in themselves or their capabilities. Don't let it be you. The next habit is a very fun one and it is 
treat yourself because every single time you feel guilty for buying yourself a Starbucks or having a Spotify subscription, you are engaging with lack. When you spend money and you put it out into the universe, it always flows back to you. There's a reason everyone says you need to spend money in order to make money. So as long as you're spending on things that align with you, it will always come back, e.g opening a business, buying self-development books, investing in your knowledge by like getting a mentor or buying a course or just spending on happy, loving experiences because you know you deserve that and that's also the key to having a happy, abundant life. So when you treat yourself to your favorite lipstick, a latte or a lunch, you are signaling to the universe, I am not afraid of money. I do not see this as loss. I know it will come back. And let's say you really don't have a penny to your name, okay? I am not here to tell you to go into debt, okay? Do what aligns with what is in your means whether that's buying a little coffee or even going on a walk and being abundant with your time that's another great way to do it like stop overworking yourself and start giving yourself breaks and treating yourself because you know the work's always going to be there and you're always going to be able to achieve you don't need to hustle 24 7 and sacrifice rest and self-care and sleep just to have a chance at succeeding because you know it's always going to be available to you uh, but also going back to Stop stating, stop questioning. If you truly can't buy anything, start looking at that latte and thinking, how can I afford this every day? The next lifestyle change is a very simple one and this is gratitude daily. There are so many ways to do this. You can make it a habit to journal every single evening, gratitude. This journaling can be three bullet points every single day, that's all you do. I'm sure there are journaling apps where you download it and then you'll just type it like a text every single day, record it. Or you can make it a habit to call your parent or your boyfriend or your best friend and every single day when you FaceTime or you call, you make it a habit and you share with each other the things that you're grateful for that happen in your day. What this does is when you know every single evening you're gonna come home and you are going to record those things, when you go out into the day in the morning, your mind is now trained to look for beautiful things, to remember nice little wholesome moments that you probably would have looked past before. And as a result, life always feels good life always feels abundant and the last lifestyle change is something that has been a huge part of my life and that i do every single day to this day i was actually doing it multiple times today you're going to essentially daydream like i want you to close your eyes before you go to sleep every single night and imagine yourself in the craziest rooms with your dream amount of money in your dream house in your dream relationship and play it in your head like a movie because that is what i do and ever since i have done that every single thing i've dreamt of i have it a lot of people go to bed imagining scenarios with their crush or thinking about their problems and what this does is it lowers your vibration and then it sets the tone for the for your day the next day and then you're always in this constant state of lack and worrying about the negatives in your life if you make it a habit to constantly imagine yourself like oh, i'm gonna be here one day like it hasn't happened but i can see it and i can watch it so clearly life is always abundant because you know there's so much possibility and the last chapter homework and affirmations so the first homework task is to journal and release all of your worries if you feel like you have some things that you're really struggling with with your scarcity mindset i want you to get out a piece of paper i want you to write down everything you're worried about you know i don't have enough money or what if i don't get the job write it all down okay be honest be vulnerable get it all out once you've done, now you've literally physically gotten that all out of yourself, you've released that emotion, next to all of those phrases, you are going to write the abundant thought of it next to it. And this is so you can train your mind to get into the habit of abundance. So on the days that these thoughts pop up again, because they do, and that's completely normal, you know what to tell it instead. For example, money is really tight right now and I'm scared that I'm gonna run out of it to money is always flowing to me. I have nothing to be afraid of. The universe always protects me and I will achieve my greatest dreams. Hermit task number two, I want you to treat yourself this week, okay? To anything that is within your budget, it's completely up to you. Have some fun and signal to the universe, I can treat myself and I can spend money and it's, it's okay, I'm not in loss, it's fine. Once you do this, take a picture, send it to me on my Instagram DM at Tamcor or Better yet, post it on your Instagram story and tag me in it because I would love to see, I'd love to repost them. And I wanna check, okay, that you've been doing your homework. Hermit task number three, get your calendar out and I want you to schedule a time for you to practice gratitude. It could be once a day, in the evening, in the morning. It could be once a week, every Sunday. And you need to make it priority that on this day, I'm gonna say what I was grateful for in the week, 
or the day. And this is gonna train your mind for abundance so quickly and make sure that you always see the glass as half full. And the last homework task is to do something this month, I'm giving you a whole month, okay? to push yourself towards your dreams, to make some sort of action so that you can be confident and know I'm creating that abundant life. And like I said before, you can use Skillshare for this. You have a whole month free trial down below in the description for you to use. Depending on your goal, you know, maybe if you wanna to go to the gym, you better go, sign up right now, off you go. And once again, send me a picture, send me a message, tag me in your stories, I am about to hold you accountable. And to finish the video, here are some abundance affirmations I want you to be saying to yourself until it flows to you so naturally and effortlessly that you'll never need to watch this video again. Money flows to me effortlessly. I am worthy of abundance. The universe supports me in achieving all of my dreams. Everything works out in my favor and always in my best interest. I release all resistance to my desires. And finally, I love life and life loves me back. And that brings us to the end of this video. I just feel like a big ball of positive energy and I hope you do too. Comment down below. Let me know what you thought of this video. How are you feeling right now? Are you excited to embark on this new journey? Um, like this video if you enjoyed it. And I think that's all for now. I will see you guys in the next one. I appreciate you. Oh, remember, I have a vlog channel. I always forget to talk about it. Go check it out, okay? Let's be besties. I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Mm -hmm.